So crop outs and cutouts, here we go. In this session, we're gonna look at multiple tools. We're gonna look at set transparent color, crop to shape, remove background, and then I'm gonna show you some combination techniques if uh, time permits. Go ahead and go out to that Google Drive file, right click, download it, open it in Microsoft PowerPoint. Let's not open it in Google Slides, that would cause problems. So go ahead and save it and open it up in Microsoft PowerPoint, please. So the first thing I want to talk about is set transparent color. And earlier when we got updated in PowerPoint, I thought it went away and I was very frustrated, but no, it still exists in case you were looking for it. What you do is go ahead and click a picture. Right now I'm going to talk, so I want you guys to watch for a second and then I'll say I'll give you a few minutes. But first let's watch. Uh, for example, I put a really simple picture of some leaves up here on screen. Okay, if I have this leaf here, I'll go to picture tools at the top and I'll go to color. Set transparent color still exists, it's right there. Get my magic wand, click it, and boom, looky there. All right, obviously I chose a really simple picture for you to use. Click the picture, click picture tools, color, set transparent color. Go ahead and give it a try. This works best when you have isolated images. Sometimes when you have stock art collections, you'll have something called an isolated image. Or if you're a person who likes to take your own pictures for use, that's another great way to get pictures. Sometimes you'll need a stapler or a pair of scissors or something like that. Just uh, put it on a white um, napkin or something, put it on a white background, take it, and it's great because it just, you know, one click and it's gone. And of course, it has to be clean, right? So if I had a picture, Sample image. If I had a picture of a turkey vulture. <laughs> turkey vulture. Okay, turkey vulture. And it's on a blue background. But that blue is not a computer generated blue, that is the sky. And as we all know, the sky has many, many shades of blue in it. If I were to try that trick here, what do you think is going to happen? Set transparent color. We'll really see what that blue's made out of. That's what's going to happen. Um, it doesn't quite work out, so we'll have to use a different tool for that, and we will shortly. But so that'll only really work on a computer-generated or a preset image, like when you intentionally put it inside of a white box and take the picture. Crop to shape. Sometimes you get something like this. Okay, like the turkey vulture. If I were to get rid of white, what do you think is going to happen? Picture, color tools, set transparent color. I'm just going to take away bits of my letter, take away bits of my button, and I don't want that, right? But this is a pretty regular shape. Looks like an oval to me. So what I'm going to do is crop to shape. I mean, my next fastest thing to do. Up here, you see the crop button? You hit that down arrow, crop. Crop to shape. I'm going to select oval. I'm going to get these uh, black lines, and what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to push on these black lines a bit. I'm holding the shift key down to keep it regular, but it's really not necessary. I'm going to push on these black lines and push it around my image. Um, don't have to be perfect at my first go here. I'm just going to push it, push, 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 George Bush. All right, boom, look at that. There's my button. That is crop to shape. Now that everyone saw how awesome that is, give it a try. You go ahead and click that white box, crop, drop down arrow, crop to shape, choose the oval, take those black lines and push them, push them, push them, push them to get around that strategy button. Of course, this will only work if you have a regular shape like a square or a circle or any one of those awesome shapes that happen to be in crop to shape. Triangle, diamond, heart, arrows. So it's not always going to work. However, in situations like this, it's a very effective way of getting rid of the background and it works rather quickly. 
Remove background. And Deb, here's your answer. Good question, Deb. What's the difference between said transparent color and remove background? Well, here we have another situation where there's a lot of white going on, right? And as someone responded perfectly, Kurt, I believe, the white would disappear. So I don't want to do set transparent color. At the same time, it is not a simple shape, so I cannot do crop to shape. But it's pretty easy. So I want to do a picture tools, remove background, pink. Okay, everything's turned pink. Oh no, I didn't want to turn it pink. Well, that's just to tell you what's going to get cut. So I'm going to push this little box around. I'm going to stretch this box out to cover everything that I want to keep. And that's everything, right? Come on now. Call to remove background tool, but later on I'll show you, you can use it for a lot more. All right. And then you see that my plan's going to disappear and my arrow's going to disappear because I didn't get the tip of that probably. Come on. I don't want it to, so I'm going to hit mark areas to keep. Put a line through that. I want to keep this. Boy, is it laggy when you're on a webinar. It's really slow. I want to keep this. Will you please not disappear my letters? Or my arrow. So I'm just taking this um, mark areas to keep pencil. I'm just kind of, doesn't have to be exact. I'm just drawing a line through these things that it's marked out that I want to keep. And once everything is the way I want to keep, I can hit keep changes. Or I could just click off of it and boom, man with plan. And I got a plan. Everybody go ahead and give it a try. The picture, picture tools, remove background. It's the first button there. Remove background. You shouldn't have to do too much mark areas to keep. You should only have to do a little bit of it. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to hit remove background and I gotta wait, give me a little spinny circle. Spinny blue circle, then I gotta wait, and then it gives me the pink. And sometimes I gotta wait for it to respond. It takes a little bit of time, wait for it to move. So it may take you a little bit longer because PowerPoint isn't always the most cooperative. So also you got other buttons here. You got discard all changes, you got mark areas remove. We're gonna look at some of those in a second. Refining edges. Sometimes your problems are a little bit bigger, like my boss here, Jeff. Hey, Jeff, you're looking really super cool. This is a lovely kid called Nerd. And I, and I went around the office having people take pictures of these props, these nerd props. <laughs> Let's cut Jeff out. Okay. Picture tools. Remove background. Okay, Jeff. Whoa, what happened to him? Obviously, I'm going to push this box around him, try to get most of him and nothing else in the picture. But you'll still see, even if I get it perfectly around Jeff, it's still confused because this is a more complex image. All right? So I'm going to have to hit that mark areas to keep button so we don't cut off his torso. Jeff doesn't like it when you cut off his torso. Oh, don't cut off my torso. Now we cut off his elbow. Please don't cut my elbow out. There we go. And then, of course, he's still holding on to that background, so I'll hit mark areas to remove. And then I'll just kind of, now. Now, this one's an interesting situation because I had him holding that skinny little stick, right? There's that skinny little stick. I mark areas to remove. Now, I want to keep that skinny little stick so we don't think those are his real glasses. Hit mark areas to keep. Do my very, very best. I may have to zoom in to see it, to draw a line on that stick. Then I can hit mark areas to keep, remove, and just kind of play with it a little bit to get exactly what I want. And then once I'm done, that should be the end of it. I can click off of it and voila, look, there's Jeff. He's got a little bit of face, something going on by his face up there that I can remove. I can always go back, click that picture again, go back to remove background. I can say, oh, I didn't want that. I can hit delete mark. 
Get rid of a mark. Get, yeah, make me a liar. Don't look at that, it fixed it. Oh, so go ahead and play with Jeff's face. It doesn't have to be exact. That's the nice thing about PowerPoint. Because if you're in a graphical editing tool, you have to be a lot more precise. And yeah, for me, that means that the zoom it up to like 400% so I can see everything that's going on, right? You don't have to be that exact. Just kind of get in there and I don't like this, I don't like that. Cut this, cut that, very good. Okay, see how Jeff has such nice hair, it all lays down in one direction. What about people like this, more like me? Got the hair going all over the place and you pick up all this white. Well, one quick trick on these kind of people are to click them and go with a picture tool, picture effects, soften edge after you've done all of your cleanup. You take it at 2.5 and it gets rid of that weird white glow around its body and all the edges. So and then it kind of looks more like that. So that's a do your crop out, do your cut out, get rid of the white, and then you go picture effects, soft edges. I don't go too far because then he starts to look weird. But you can get rid of some of the light white outline with a soft edge. Everybody give it a try, go picture effects, soft edges, and you take them down by a couple of points. So I'm going to talk a little more about this Remove Background tool. It is designed to remove your background. However, I like to, you know, take a tool and <laughs> do whatever I want with it. For example, let's recolor people's clothing. Yay. Here's a trick. So you find this guy. He's got a blue shirt. You don't want him to have a blue shirt. What do you do? Well, you can use that Remove Background tool. For example, I'll copy this guy. Hey, guy. Ooh, there's the guy. I'll hit Picture Tools, Remove Background. Now this is a trick, so pay attention and watch. I'm going to push the box just on his shirt. Just his shirt. Just get the shirt. Nothing else. Just the shirt. Okay. Just want the shirt. Got a little flesh in there. I'm going to remove his arms. He doesn't need those arms. Whoops. I moved the whole box. I did not mean to do that. I'm going to make mark areas remove. I'm going to remove his arms. He doesn't need that arm. Thumb is always separate, man. Get rid of the neck. Get rid of the other arm. And looky, now what I got? I got a shirt, okay? After I get this shirt, what I can do is color it, color tools, more variations. I gave him a green shirt last time. Yeah, get in dark, dark. Now notice these colors aren't right. You're like, oh, but you put a blue on it and turned black. These colors are tints, okay? They're gonna tint the shirt to a different color. So if I put a black on there or an orange, it's going to be a little bit off. Move a tint. I can choose more colors, okay, if I want it to. Uh, and I want black. Okay. So we're going to make him Johnny Cash. Okay, notice how I didn't do any cropping on that shape. So if I put them together, align center, align middle, boom. Now he's black shirt, black pants. Ready for a special occasion. I didn't go too fast. Everyone catch that? Go ahead and uh, try to recolor the dude's shirt. The color of the shirt. The color of the shirt was color. And then down here it says recolor. And I can recolor it. All these different colors. If I don't like it, I can hit more variations and change it to different variations. Ooh. A little teal going on here. And notice how it's the same picture, okay? It's got the same dimensions. I didn't mess with the dimensions. So when I align center and I align middle, it stays together. This is Deb. After you realign, would you group that so they don't get separated? Good question. 
after I do this, I first of all, I would do it in a scrap file. I probably wouldn't group them in case I want to change something later, but I would copy and paste it as a flat image. So some kind of something I mentioned before in previous sessions where I would not do this in a real presentation middle because there's that chance that uh, my picture, my file will get too big. So I would go, I'd copy it, then I'd paste it as a picture. Now this is one picture that you can't pull apart. Mm -hmm. I would okay. paste it as a picture, a flat picture into my actual presentation. Good, thank you. But in my scrap files, I'd leave it like this. That way I can go back and change my mind. So you're saying the flat picture is less um, size, it's smaller, smaller size. than doing yeah. grouping. Okay. No, it's not because of the grouping. It's because uh, this is not just the shirt. This is actually, it, it keeps all, it's it's remembering everything. Gotcha. All, this man's still here. Dude's okay. still there. It remembers everything you did. All right. Yeah, that's why. What did I do to his hand? <laughs> so, yeah. So, whenever you're doing these kind of edits, and a lot of it gets remembered, and that's memory, and that takes up space. Yeah. Good question. Good question. That's why I always tell people, like, wow, why did we do that? And I'm like, you don't want your file size to get too big because PowerPoint is going to remember what that original image looked like and it's going to keep all that information until you get rid of it. And the way I get rid of it is I copy control C and I picture, paste it as a picture into the new part. Because if I just were to control C and copy it and then just control P paste it, it's still going to be all, the, it's going to still be two different images of that dude. It's still here. So I would have to right click and paste it as a picture to make a nice flat image. And then that's not editable, but I keep my scrap file in case I did want to edit. Sharpen and pop out. Let's look at this blurry puppy. So the puppy is blurry. But if I were to just sharpen this picture, corrections, sharpen, everything's a little too much, right? So you can make a copy of it and you can use that, that remove background tool again. Remove background. All right. Yay. And then you do all your fancy pushing and whatnot and you crop out just the dog, which is what I did. I'm not going to do it now. Uh, you have to ungroup this thing because I grouped it for some reason. You crop out the puppy, right? You can hit sharpen, correct, sharp the puppy, make him nice and sharp, then paste it right back on top of that blurry background. Oh, that's cool. Now he's like popped out, right? I kind of threw a frame on there and had a little fun, you know, to make him really pop out. And then when I thought, whoops, the background was still a little much, I just put into gray, just grayed out the background. So now we got this really cute puppy popping out of gray background. You know exactly what to focus on. Here's a piece of equipment, for example. Oh, what is this? Anybody know? Come on, y'all know what this is. ASOS. I said, I want, to I want to emphasize this particular part of ASOS. We're going to talk about this piece of equipment, right? Oh, which one? Uh, the white one. Well, that's not very helpful. The one, one, two, three, four, fifth one from the back. Do you mean the back starting from the counting from the back or the front? That's annoying. So look, I cropped out the picture. I put a glow on it. So after I cropped it out, noticing they're all still white, I put a picture effect glow on there. So now it's glowing orange. So now you know exactly what part of that equipment I'm looking at. Yes, you could make it a rainy day or a sunny day too. Yes, you can use that to change the background. You most definitely can. That would be another good way to use it. But if you have um, something you want to emphasize on a map and everyone's looking at the bottom right corner because there's a really interesting, weird thing there. And you're like, no, no, I'm talking about the upper left corner. Uh, my left or your left? Well, you don't have to even worry about that. You know, you can gray out the rest. You can leave the part that you're interested in color. You know, just just do this kind of layover picture, kind of like copy it, cut it out, leave the part you want, you know, cover up the rest, turn it gray. Make it pop. It's very useful for that. One thing I want you guys to notice this whole time, whenever I'm doing this type of thing, even with the shirts or with the dog or with this picture here, what I am not doing is messing with the crop. I leave it as big as it really is. So if I were to go back to remove background, you'll see the whole picture still there. 
And the reason I do that, of course, is so that it will be very easy to line it back up with the original image. Align center, arrange, align middle. I don't have to guess, it will be exact. But if you mess with the crop, it will not be. So no crop in here. But there are other strategies and techniques which I will cover at a different time. Um, these are just a few. Changing colors, maybe somebody you wanted to use a piece of stock art, but they were not looking like a weather service person. Maybe you wanted to turn them into an IMET. I did turn several people into IMETs with the <laughs> with the right color uniform. Um, many, many, many different techniques you can use out there. So here we are. Any questions? Can you remove Jeff's glasses? Yes, you can remove his glasses. However, if I did, there'd be a big eyeglasses shaped hole up there where his face is. <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could put a little bit of fleshy color stuff in the background. Shall we play with Jeff's face? That's always fun. Remove background, mark area to remove. I don't like the glasses. You can leave it like a very dark eyebrows. Can remove his face. Jeff, you don't mind if we we do a little surgery here on your face, do you? No, that's fine. It'll probably be an improvement. Aww. <laughs> no, but he did put a fabulous unicorn wig on his hair once. It was fabulous. Put sunglasses on instead. Yeah, you could do that, I imagine. It's not gonna be nearly as much fun as what I plan on doing. See, now he's got that hole. Let's see if I could take a little bit of other flesh, send it back. <laughs> Yeah, it it would take some work, but I could fix that. You run through again how you changed the back on that last one, how you changed the background, but made sure that image still aligned perfectly. Uh, okay. The isolated part of it. Sure. So I'll, I can do this. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is go backwards. I'm going to reset this image. Picture tools, reset picture. All right, here we go. Oh, look at this thing. So the first thing I did was I made a copy of it. Control C, Control V. I made a copy of this image. Then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to isolate a piece of this. Actually, I wanted a piece of the radar, but I couldn't find one, so I went with this thing. Ooh, ASOS. Okay. Remove background. And I thought, well, I'll isolate something just to show them that you can isolate a piece of equipment. Won't that be snazzy? I'll look so cool. And I did. Then I realized it's white. <laughs> Mark areas to keep. I said, oh, I want to keep this bit here. Yeah, zoom in because I'm blinder than a bat. I'm going to isolate this piece. All right. I'm going to get rid of the grass. I'm going to get rid of the track. And I'm going to get rid of that weird thing over there. I'm just going to make sure I have this piece of equipment. And I'll look so smart and awesome. This is going to be great. And then mark this area to keep over here. So I did all this work here. And then I realized they're all white. Okay, delete mark. Mark area to keep. There you go. I was like, that's awesome. Good job, Hattie. And then I'm like, ah, oh, crap, it doesn't stand out. <laughs> Did all that work and it still sucks. All right, fine. Let's see. I'm going to, oh, wait, I know. I'll grayscale it. That'll make me look cool. Color, grayscale, and then I'm looking at it. It's, it's a white image. <laughs> so sad. Oh, that's smart, Hattie. So I said, what can I do? Picture effects, glow, freaking be orange. Ta-da. And that is how that story emerged. Wasn't that exciting? Destroyed all my hopes of being super awesome, but it still was able to make the point. And then we have... Oh, and how to get it to line up, click the old picture, click the new picture. It should be the same size and shape, align center, align middle, boom. 
It also should lock on if it's the same. Oh yeah, it'll snap to you mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you have snap to, if you have snap twos turned on. Oh, I have snap two turned on. Yeah, because all of those things are white. Yeah. <laughs> And that'll happen too. See, it's not a bad story because if you like show a picture of a radio transmitter or something, everything's gray. <laughs> but still, so that's a good way to emphasize pieces of equipment. Or maybe you have a piece of some sort of weather map or something and you want everybody to focus on this area and not this entire thing. You can like gray out everything and only isolate that one piece and say, yeah, look at the yellow part. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't, guys, don't look over there. Don't look over there. Look over here. Look at you see the part I left in color. You look at that part. <laughs> could, could you also do that sharpen, or would that like what you did be with a dog? I could sharpen it a little. A maybe second. it wouldn't make much a difference. Uh, eh. Eh. Okay. Didn't do too good. But the, but my dog looked cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it depends. In some situations, you can. Another thing this is good for is when you take a picture, for example, I used to use this picture, and I couldn't find it, of these three guys sitting at a table, and the table had a white tablecloth on it. So, of course, when they took the picture, the flash hit the tablecloth quite out. And so um, the tablecloth is like already brilliantly white, but the people are dark because they're sitting in a you know, big conference hall area eating together. And so if you try to brighten the people, the the tablecloth becomes blinding. Well, now what you can do is you can isolate the people, brighten them up, and then put them back at the table. And that way, the the white tablecloth won't become like a a fiery light. So it, it's very useful for many things. So it's more than just remove background, at least for people like me that, you know, misuse the tools. <laughs> Great question. Any other questions? You guys don't have questions. All right, so that's what we did. We did transparent color, we did uh, crop two, and did remove background. And then we played around with layering remove background, and we also did a little sharp, a uh, little uh, softening of edges. That's it. That's all I got. Handling complex images this is when you have really, really busy images, but you really want to keep them and you've got some words to write. What can you possibly do? And I will show you some things on what you could possibly do. And then smarter, smart art. That is, I not just the smart art, the way PowerPoint does it, because a lot of times other choices are lame, especially the colors. I'll show you how to make it actually look cool. And uh, that's what I have coming up next. All right, thanks, Hetty. So what we'll do with those, we're gonna take next week off since it's Memorial Day weekend and we'll get sessions set up for handling complex images and for smart out set up for the week of June 1st, weeks of June 1st and June 8th. And we will advertise those on the Insider. We'll have them on the calendars on the Commerce Learning Center. And also I will send you in the follow-up email to this session, I will send you the link to the Leadership Academy site uh, welcome back, Hattie, to the camera. I will send them back, send them to uh, Cindy the link to the site where we're posting both the information for the upcoming meetings as well as the recordings from previous meetings. So if you want to go back and take a look at something that we did, you didn't get to attend the first time, those recordings will be there for you to look at. So I will follow up with you. I'll also include a uh, brief survey on there to uh, get any feedback that you have. We like feedback, don't we, Hattie? Uh, oh, we love feedback. Yes. So especially if it's good, but we'll take the 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 negative, the constructive, constructive criticism. Constructive feedback, yeah. Yes. So we'll send you a survey to, to provide feedback on the session so we can continue to improve them. And unless there are any questions, looks like we're getting a bunch of thank yous. Uh, we'll wrap up and hope everyone has a great Memorial Day weekend. Yes. We can also you play with dyeing Jeff's hair, whatever you guys really want. If you want to alter his appearances, we'll do that in you know other sessions. Send them to me. <laughs> we can do that. All right. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. You're welcome, Jeff. <laughs>